of a random process and the variability of the random process about the central representation so what is happening that uh, till now uh, you, you might have a con uh, uh, conception that uh, you are having number that various number uh, you are taking various number okay so uh, among these number you try to come up with a uh, uh, so it is simply you can say that it is a data set you come up with a central representation of all these number that means uh, that central representation simply we call it mean or sample means because it is a sample so sample mean we come up with a sample mean suppose you are having data so you will say that uh, uh, almost uh, 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 all data are concentrated about this mean so that we had already seen also in uh, law of large number also we had seen so these data are concentrated about mean okay that it says uh, regarding that central presentation so these are 2d data you can see that 2d data we have taken so it is odd about the point uh, when data we represent it through point wise so that uh, that approach is coming but what is happening that here data happens to be a function so suppose we are having a family of functions so there are various functions like this way one function is this another function is this uh, various class of function we are having so various class of function okay so this class of function so if i ask uh, what is the central representation of this function so it is here we are having class of function simply we can say that uh, here we are we are having f of t such that f uh, simply you write like this way it is a family of functions such that f is a function from uh, even you can define a interval either close interval or you can take any a2 close interval ab2 r real collection of all real valued function which are defined from uh, ab interval ab to r so this collection if you if you are taking this collection so it is a collection of function simply we can say that so if you are having a collection of function then how we can talk about central representation of this one so easily we can say that uh, among these family of function uh, all the function lies in, in a very small neighbor in, in a some neighborhood of this function you can say that it is a uh, what uh, you, you can call it uh, it is a limiting value or simply we see we can come up with a uh, function a central representation of this function better we will give name to this uh, as uh, mu mean function we can call it mean function so that uh, uh, you call it mean function okay so that you can say that uh, if you take any function which we, which would be uh, within epsilon of uh, mu we can say that uh, within how we can say that within epsilon of mu so here uh, here mu is a function it is a real valued function so just we can take uh, uh, notation of neighborhood of the function like this which, uh, it, it would be just modulus right uh, right now so we will say that uh, uh, f of t if you are taking any function f is any uh, function from this uh, family Let's call it capital f okay capital f it uh, it is in the epsilon neighborhood of mu so we say like like this way okay this is the concept so you can say that if this one is the mu then uh, it will uh, you can say that uh, uh, mu uh, here this function if you you can same nature uh, this uh, just mimic this function by deviate by epsilon okay so this function you can uh, this boundary boundary of the neighborhood of uh, this uh, uh, under this central representation you can say that this one is mu mu of t minus epsilon and likewise you will get upper boundary this would be mu of t plus epsilon so we say that we are getting a neighborhood of, neighborhood of uh, neighborhood mu of t in which uh, most of the uh, function of from this family belongs to so that is that this mu is the central representation or neighborhood concept or just, just uh, what we are willing to generalize the neighborhood concept for function 
class of function simply that i would like to say that so this is simply you can say that uh, uh, it is just generalized from what we had already studied neighborhood of points so generalized to neighborhood of function and then we will call it uh, central representation of the function okay so that is the concept to, today we will discuss so just uh, uh, like today uh, today this one is lecture number 37 and we will discuss here in detail about uh, uh, central representation of uh, random process and uh, after that uh, we will talk about uh, variability how variability it happens around uh, that central representation uh, through various function and uh, again we will talk about uh, various uh, specification approach to uh, specify uh, random process so <laughs> lecture name is central representation of a uh, random process and variability about the central representation okay so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to discuss about uh, two different uh, way to visualize a random process okay and uh, once we are visualizing that then one of, uh, in one visualization we will see it from the random variable perspective family of random variable perspective so uh, how we can find distribution of such things so distribution approach we will appro apply here in order to specify a random process in a better way okay afterward we will talk about central representation that means uh, definitely random process happens to be function of a family of random variables so we need to get a central uh, function center uh, central function or time function about which if you deviate it we see variability then that variability may cover all the member of the random process so that variability we will also introduce here okay and then we will talk about uh, multiple random processes okay so uh, first two are talking about just a single random process then we will talk about uh, multi if there are two, more than two random process then how we can uh, study that why why we will talk about so in control system you might have already gone through one uh, control system process that uh, there is an input you know that uh, uh, generally that we denote it by uh, u so call it uh, capital u i will talk from random process perspective so capital u t it happens to be input random process that we input it okay and uh, in control system there is an evaluation like one dynamical system is coming then there is a system in system we know that that there is a system uh, process that we call it xt we denote generally that variable xt then we are getting output and output generally we denoted by yt or we can call it observation one simple representation you can call it the relation between the output yt and input ut and system variable is simply you can say that it can come like this way a type sorry uh, here uh, generally uh, i'm trying to give uh, general representation so i can say that as a very simple representation i would like to see so it would be just summing the system variable and the input variable so this representation you had you might have already seen that uh, simple representation y equal to x plus u might have already seen that but i am trying to write that in the framework of uh, random process okay this representation in control system you might have already seen that simpler and here x is what either you take a discrete dynamical system or continuous dynamical system so if you are taking discrete dynamical system then here it would be uh, t plus 1 would be equal to uh, a time uh, the current a state of the system of state plus b time ut input to variable this one is the system dynamic generally we call it okay this one is the system dynamics and uh, this one is the observation that we call it observational equation we call it so it is a very simple kind of control system what we call it so same situation is coming like in the case of multiple random variable you can uh, deal with multiple random variable here one random variable random process is uh, ut uh, that input random uh, input that re reflect input another random process is coming uh, from the system system uh, system also might be uh, uh, might be involved with some kind of randomness so that that's where you need to represent that system System variable by a, a random process then output uh, would be also a, a random process so uh, three set of random process uh, you are getting it so that's why we need to discuss about uh, multiple uh, random process as well okay if someone is not willing to uh, observe input forget about you can 
there is no necessary to always include input uh, just uh, focus on system within the system you try to get output like our uh, output would be your observation what you simply you are considering dynamics uh, dynamic system like uh, output would be suppose you are want to infer about only velocity or acceleration or uh, displacement depends upon so those would be y and uh, what would be your system variable the system variable uh, jointly we take a take a displacement and whatever uh, things are coming in order to uh, describe the system dynamics so if you are talking about uh, dynamics of a simple pendulum pendulum then you need to know uh, what you need to know displacement you need to know uh, velocity angular general angular velocity then you can de describe the uh, dynamics of the simple pendulum okay so that is the perspective and if you talk about observation what would be observation either you need displacement you know uh, you want to if some suppose suppose you are, are willing to observe uh, uh, what we call it uh, displacement then displacement would be your observation suppose you are willing to observe uh, uh, velocity then angular that angular velocity then because uh, that pendulum simple pendulum it moves along a path so that's why we talk about angular uh, velocity and so if you are willing to observe angular velocity one is then observation would be angular velocity if you are willing to observe angular acceleration then that would be it depends on depends, depends upon your choice okay so all this your uh, you know from control system that's why we need to talk about to multiple random processes as well okay in order to understand a uh, physical process physical process which evolves with respect to time i am talking about we evolves with respect to the evolutionary process we are talking about okay so coming to first part that uh, uh, two different way of uh, visualizing a random process and that after that we will talk about a specification of a random process through joint representation okay joint uh, uh, joint distribution function so here coming to visualization of a random process so what is happening that a random process we had already uh, uh, defined it happens to be a function with two argument one argument is a time index another argument happens to be output uh, sorry outcome of the uh, random experiment omega simply we say that and for better understanding i i would like to proceed with this notation just x suffix t why because uh, in uh, uh, last uh, three model we had already seen that x is talking about random process a random variable and it happens to be a map from uh, sample space to r so by default x happens to be a map but we treat as a variable and we never uh, talk about what would be the argument x is taking so uh, inherently it is uh, when we are writing x so by default we assume that x would be function of omega that omega happens to be output of a uh, random experiment any uh, any uh, arbitrary output of a random experiment so in a, it is inherited there in x so that's why same concept we are borrowing it here in order to represent a random process so when we are writing it xt xt is talking about evolution with respect to time and the randomness source of randomness that omega is providing uh, that one is inherited and it is just uh, uh, it is coming by default so that's why xt you can talk uh, uh, like this way uh, more explicit form of representation of random processes x is function of t and omega so that uh, up to variable you can say that and t is what time index and uh, omega is the uh, outcome of the random experiment that we say that but this uh, outcome in, it happens in in such a fashion it evolves with respect to time so that's where we are getting a random process so so now here once you observe a random process we we see two argument t and omega so what is happening that uh, so we go through partial approach partial observation approach that means so, uh, at a one time we are fixing one argument um, and varying another argument so that approach partial approach we are uh, applying so what will happen so if you are fixing t then in that case we observe for each fixed t xt would be a random variable definitely because why because omega is the source of randomness so that's why xt would be a random variable and it happens to be a, a simple that simply definition of a random variable what does it talk about it happens to be a for each fixed t it xt happens to be a map from omega to r it is a random variable and definitely it is a random variable then it will satisfy certain uh, probability law that probability law may be uniform 
law, maybe non-uniform law, maybe Gaussian law, maybe uh, exponential law, may, maybe sub-exponential law. There are various law of probability law. So it may depends upon the problem situation, what kind of law it is satisfying that we will we'll see it. Okay. So definitely when for each fixed t, x t is a random variable under certain uh, probability law. Okay. Now further, this one is the one partial observation by fixing t. Now next what we will do, if we fix omega, the outcome omega, then there is no randomness. Once we fix outcome, there is no randomness. What, what we see, just we see variability of that particular outcome with respect to time. That what is happening that so it simply said that we just try to realize the random process with respect to particular outcome along the time when time evolves. So in that case xt it is just a fixed probability what we call it with respect to that particular outcome omega and that but it evolves with respect to time so that we can say that xt is here just function of time xt is function of time simply we can type it varies with respect to time so that is the or simply we can say that sample path or sample function also so one uh, several example i have taken it like this way so if, if you are performing a random experiment which if where outcome evolves with respect to time then suppose uh, you are taking a specific outcome omega 1 so with respect to omega 1 just uh, this random process it varies uh, without randomness you, we see there is no randomness it just evolves with respect to time evolution why because oh, omega 1 is fixed here we are fixed uh, uh, that this omega 1 is a fixed probability it is not like that uh, it is having distribution I mean, once we are taking a specific outcome observing a specific outcome then that time probability becomes fixed quantity so that's where yeah, there is no randomness so just here what evolution with respect to time evolution simply it is a deterministic situation what we say that and here in the in this case simply you can represent it it is a, just a function of time f of t it is just a simple function and here you can put here omega 1 okay omega 1 in sense that you, you, this uh, sample function it is coming with respect to the outcome a fixed outcome omega 1 likewise if you are taking another outcome omega 2 with respect to that you will get another uh, sample function or sample path or realization of the random process f of t okay uh, here suffix omega 2 that omega 2 is here fixed okay so this is this one is another function so you, here you don't observe randomness just you see that uh, evolution of uh, the random process with respect to time with this and uh, with a fixed uh, outcome okay likewise if you uh, are taking omega 3 then you are getting third realization of the random process this realization so you can say that say that this evolves with respect to time but what is happening that if you talk take all these realizations on sample path in together as a collection of family of function and you fix time so here this is time t1 you have taken here time t1 you have taken so you can see that with respect to this fixed time t so just take a vertical line so like this way it is cutting at t1 so you can see that we are getting a random variable that we denote it by x t1 so here we can observe that uh, x t1 is taking with different value here here it taking different value very near to zero here it is taking a different value, negative value so you can observe that so here x t1 is for fixed t x t1 uh, for a fixed time x t1 it is taking various uh, possible value various possible value with uh, certain probability law so that's where here x t1 it is a random variable we can say that it is a random variable likewise if you fix another time t2 the with respect to that we are getting that x2 is observing various value observing value under certain probability law so that's why we will get another random variable x t2 so it is a, again a random variable so we will get a family of random variable uh, with respect to each time so for each fixed t that's way what i had already mentioned here each fixed t x t is a random variable but if you fix the outcome omega then it becomes a sample path so that is the two different way to visualize a random process okay anyone is having any question regarding that further understanding of these two uh, visualization is it clear to everyone just try to answer yes or no Okay, fine. Then uh, I will go further to discuss about uh, specifying a random process. That uh, uh, what is happening that a random process can be specified completely by collecting the joints 
community distribution function of joint random variable uh, x t1 x22 and t2 x up to x t n okay and and there we will get equivalent representation of this one uh, x t1 definitely it is a random variable we can call it x1 x t2 we are calling it x2 and x t and we are calling it xn and how we are getting these uh, uh, joint random variable by sampling at sample instant t1 t2 up to tn so remember that we are talking about sample instant okay it is not like that uh, we have to take a specific n number of time sample or m number of sample instant okay we can take any any n sample instance so that's where sampling approach is coming we can take any two so first uh, take any sample instance like here uh, in the time index set take any it may be these n okay it may be these n so all these happens uh, in uh, what uh, in a very what we call it in a random uh, random sample approach it's, it's sampling happen in a random process a random way okay simply we say that it is a random sampling simply i would look, like to say that so that's where we are taking sample instant sampling at sample instant first we are taking time t1 t2 up to tn and at each of each of these time we come up with a random variable xt1 xt2 xtn and we are giving another notation x x1 x2 xn so we are talking about to, in order to specify a random process it can be specified by the joint distribution of these <coughs> n number of random variable jointly so simply if you talk about all these n random variable in together then simply you are getting a random vector of length of dimension n so simply in short notation you can denote it by x it is a random vector of dimension n also you can call it so what is happening that if the random process is continuous valued okay that means if a state a space happens to be continuous value that means each x i is observing uh, value from some continuum set then a collection of probability density function can be used to describe the joint <coughs> distribution of this random variable so how we how we use that so we know that take joint density of uh, this uh, these uh, uh, joint random n number of joint random variable or simply call it random vector joint density of random vector x of dimension n and multiply with the corresponding infinitesimal infinitesimal uh, aerial element okay aerial element i am talking about this is the aerial element dx1 times uh, up to dxm okay so uh, then what does it talk it, it is approximating the probability that x1 is observing value joint probability of x1 when it observing value uh, within uh, uh, an interval of width dx1 likewise uh, xn is observing value within uh, an interval of width dxn okay so this one is talking about joint probability of uh, this this random vector with n number of uh, random variable come n number of random variable as component okay coordinate or component what you call it so here simply joint density is coming okay so uh, this is the one approach to specify a random process when uh, that uh, random variable observing value each random variable observing value in uh, in continuum set so we are talking about continuous valued when sample uh, simply a state of space happens to be continuous set or uh, okay continuous set that so one example i would like to take it suppose we are taking uh, gaussian random variable gaussian random variable with uh, variance uh, mean zero and variance uh, sigma square n number so here this uh, this random vector with n component uh, each component is coming from a gaussian random variable uh, gaussian uh, with uh, mean zero and variance sigma square and happens to be iid that means independent and identically distributed uh, so just for the sake of simplicity in order to get uh, simple representation of uh, this joint density we are coming with iid otherwise you can go for non iid approach as well that would be a little bit complicated directly get to explicit ex expression of joint distributions that, so that's why uh, for simple representation we are coming with iid situation iid gaussian random variables here each xi happens to be iid in nature so that we are taking so the joint density for any n sample instant remember that this also we can call it a sample uh, sample simply 
time sample also there is no uh, name for this also we call it time sample and this one we are calling it uh, sample instant so we are taking n sample instant so here the, you can the n is talking about size of the uh, sample instant because n number of time we have sampled we have sample so that's way so what would be the distribution of the protein density function so because of id nature so what we have to uh, say that each xi would be independent of other xj so that's where we, we can easily write joint density function of this random vector or by writing the multiplying the uh, individual protein density function of xi so so that's where if you multiply add to uh, the additive nature of the exponential function in the argument you can easily get uh, this is the explicit representation of a joint density function of this random vector n dimensional random vector okay or simply uh, n time uh, sample n time sample sample at n sample instant okay so that we would, we would like to say that another we will talk about suppose the random process is having a, a state of space which is observing discrete value okay uh, a discrete value that a state space is discrete value then the collection of uh, joint distribution we can uh, express it with the help of uh, probability corresponding probability mass function of those time sample okay so it is situation like this way so we know that uh, in the case of single uh, variable we know that how pro how probability mass function is, it is defined it is uh, uh, value of uh, probability mass function at x it is talking about probability that a uh, random variable that discrete random variable is observing value uh, x that probability that x random variable x is observing value x so that is the situation we had already seen that in case of discrete random variable same concept we are borrowing it here in order to get a representation or a specification of a uh, random process where uh, what is happening that uh, that uh, a state space happens to be discrete value uh, that means a random variable corresponding random variable observe each random variable for each fixed the uh, random variable is observing uh, discrete values okay so first we uh, here uh, do uh, uh, sampling at sample instant so n number of sample instant after that with respect to n sample instant we are getting a random vector of size uh, of dimension n so call it x1 x2 up to xn and here for this uh, random vector we are defining probability mass function joint probability mass function so n time sample it, it was time instant simply call it time instant or sample instant tn with respect to that we are getting uh, this one is the sample instant and this one is the time sample time sample simply uh, all these are just nomenclature you have to otherwise uh, you can take a it has been sampled from the random process so in order to sample this you have first have to sample the time then you will able to sample the random variable and in order to get a random vector of dimension n okay so we need to get a distribution the, that uh, distribution joint distribution of this one because all these are coming jointly so we need to talk about so joint distribution we are uh, that, that means joint protein mass function we are defining it by this way okay so here we haven't uh, uh, got explicit form of this one it is just uh, definition it may take very complicated form but uh, in order to simplify it we are taking an example suppose each x i is is what uh, happens to be permanently random variable with probability of success 0.5 okay so that means random vector happens to be a bernoulli uh, vector simply bernoulli random vector we can call it each xi is a bernoulli random variable with uh, probability of success 0.5 then easily we can write joint probability mass function for this time sample how uh, by uh, multiplication of uh, the individual probability mass function of xi individual probability mass function of xi so uh, what is the individual probability mass function of xi it is simply uh, what uh, 1 by 2 to the power n simply uh, right 1 by 2 1 by 2 how many times it is coming uh, n times is coming so just 1 by 2 to the power n it's very simple notation it is taking form okay so this is the concept what we we are actually why it is so probability of success is 1 by 2 then probability of failure would be what that would be also 1 by 2 1 minus 1 by 2 is again 1 by 2 that's where 
this is the uh, explicit representation of joint protein mass function of this uh, n vector bernoulli n vector n dimensional vector simply i would like to say that so we are getting joint uh, so joint uh, distribution is the ultimate aim to specify a random process so you have to get a explicit representation of joint distribution of a random variable whether it is continuous or discrete you have to uh, act accordingly uh, the question given to you or situation is given to you so i will take one example here so here i am taking uh, I, I will talk about distribution of the random variable xt for each fixed t we know that if you are fixing t xt just becomes a random variable so here we will try to find uh, what would be the distribution of that so suppose we are taking a situation like that the outcome omega has been selected at random from the continuous interval minus infinite minus 1 to 1 so that means simply uh, selected at random what does it it uh, another way it say that we are <laughs> observing omega from this interval in through uniform principle uniform law so uh, simply it is having uniform density simply you can call it what would be density of this one it would be equal to 1 by 2 when a omega is observing value from minus 1 to 1 and outside that it is 0 so that simply it, it is defined okay so here this that's why omega is random in nature and it simply define a continuous time continuous value random process xt equal to omega time cosine of 2 pi t so here in last class i had already also this, uh, discussed that so simply it is a here here omega is taking value in a continuum fashion from the interval minus 1 to 1 that's way corresponding xt random process xt would also observe value in continuum fashion that a state a space would be a continuous set and what would be continuous set it would be not exactly equal to minus 1 to 1 uh, we have to see that what would be that so we are fixing t t naught t naught we are taking with respect to t naught we are getting a random variable we denote it by x naught okay so x, x naught is the random variable from this random process one uh, a specific random variable by fixing time t and we will try to find what would be the uh, distribution function of this one definitely it would be a continuous random variable and then we need to find what is the pdf of that so we will able to find it like this way so various uh, uh, realization of uh, random process you can observe it here this given random process you can observe it for omega if you take point 0.2 negative point 0.2 then you are getting this realization this simple path if omega 0.7 you are you are getting this simple path omega, if omega is 0.9 you are getting this uh, simple path so these are the various realization okay uh, so simply here uh, x is observing value along the vertical axis and t is observing value along the horizontal axis okay so the x will observe value from the interval so here continuum principle why with this omega also if you see from the uh, sinusoidal uh, signal perspective then omega it would be what it is a talking about amplitude and the amplitude is not a fixed amplitude it is what kind of amplitude it is a random amplitude random nature randomly it is varying so what uh, how it is varying it is varying from minus infinity to infinity the amplitude is varying from minus infinity to infinity so that one is amplitude talking about variation from minus infinity to infinity if such thing is there what is the variability of uh, the x corresponding x for fixed t so that means because it would be a random variable that we would like to say that so it would be just uniform uh, x x would be also x naught would also have uniform distribution and uh, it will vary from negative of cosine of 2 pi t naught to cosine of t pi t naught positive cosine t, t how so we will see it here like this way so if you are taking t naught equal to 0 suppose t naught that fixed time t naught happens to be 0 in that case cosine of 2 pi t naught it would be what it would be just fixed quantity what is the value of cosine 2, 2 pi t naught anyone are you listening me what is what is value of cos 0 1 so here it would be 1 not 0 here it would be 1 okay so here so x naught t naught we didn't uh, t naught we have taken 0 so that's why we denoted by x 0 so x 0 it would be equal to 1 not 0 so tell me what is the density of 1 if a random variable is constant observing value con a constant value that one is equal to 1 what is the density of that anyone would like to highlight i had already mentioned that what is the density of random variable uh, x not equal to 1 what would be it 
just try to uh, understand it uh, recall that uh, in last class uh, during the stochastic con uh, convergence i had discussed that what would be then uh, distribution function definitely it is a uh, continuous uh, random variable if x not equal to one why this one is uh, one is con a continuous value it is a fixed simply fixed value the, uh, then in that case sense uh, in that sense you can say that it's taking value in continuous fashion okay okay so tell me what is the distribution of one random variable one it is the direct delta function with centered at one centered at one that means uh, this uh, direct delta function centered at one it is observing value I have already mentioned that if you are having a random variable which is observing value, a constant value throughout, then the corresponding distribution or probability density of that uh, random variable it would be given by direct delta function and uh, centered it would depends upon that constant. So constant is here it is equal to one. So that's why uh, when x equal to oh, x is not equal to one, then direct delta function is zero. Uh, when x is equal to one. Then direct delta function is observing very big value. Call it just M, capital M, very big value. So that is the direct delta function, and also it satisfies the normalizing condition of being a density function. What does it say? That if you integrate the direct delta function centered at one, then integral of that direct delta function it would be equal to one. It is for the sake of satisfying normalizing condition of the density. So that's why here, uh, here if you t not equal to zero, in that case x not equal to one, and hence we are getting a direct delta function centered at one. Okay. So again, we can say that uh, what does it talk about? Uh, it is having a density, density. So it is a continuous random variable. Uh, there is no issue. Suppose we are taking another situation when suppose t not is not equal to zero. So in that case, definitely uh, cosine of two pi not it would be not equal to one throughout. It would take some flexible value. It it will vary. It 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 will be a value between minus one to one. Any value between minus one to one. Okay. So here uh, that one is multiplied with a uh, random variable omega. So what this would be a fixed quantity. So easily we know that if we we are having a random variable which is observing value from minus infinity to infinity, and if you multiply this random variable y by a quantity alpha, then what would be the uh, domain of what is the range of alpha? That range of alpha it, simply alpha would be also multiplied multiplied with the cross corresponding interval as well. So it this so that means alpha times omega it would observe value from minus alpha to alpha. So same situation is coming. In that case, the random variable x naught it will observe value from minus cosine of two pi t naught to cosine of two pi t naught. But here it is not providing any randomness. Randomness is just coming from omega. It does, this one is just constant. So that's why omega is a uniform random variable, and hence also we can say that x naught is also a uniform random variable, and that's why this is the probability density function of x naught. Easily we got the explicit form of probability density function of x naught for fixed t uh, uh, through this random process what we had already given with the random amplitude. So this is one uh, example. We will talk about another example. Here, what is happening that we are taking another uh, random process where uh, amplitude would be fixed. It would be one equal to one, but phase phase would have random occurrence random observation okay so in that case uh, we will try to find the distribution of uh, a random variable for fixed t what kind of thing uh, situation we will have it is little bit complicated so suppose again we are taking here uh, chi chi we are selecting at random from interval minus pi to pi that means we are taking a uniform uh, through uniform law this uh, chi is observing value from minus pi to pi and we are defining a continuous time continuous valued random process y t equal to cosine of 2 pi t plus chi okay but t is taking value for, from minus infinity to infinity so easily we can say that this one is again a uh, continuous time t is taking value in continuous fashion uh, the phase is taking value this this one is simply phase we call it phase you can denote it by pi depends upon your choice so you want to denote all these are just a dummy variable you can come up with okay so this chi is taking observing value 
at random okay so for a fixed t uh, fixed t t naught we are taking t naught if this one is the fixed t with respect to that we are getting a random variable y naught our intention intention is that definitely it is a for each fixed t y t is a continuous random variable so we need to find pro corresponding probability density function of that how we can find so first we have to see various realization of the random process for uh, different different uh, value of chi from the interval minus pi to pi okay so suppose this uh, if you are taking uh, chi equal to zero then if that means zero phase this one is talking about zero phase uh, representation of the signal uh, signal this uh, sinusoidal signal if you are taking uh, shifting the phase by pi by four then you are getting different signal this is the different si signal you can observe all these so uh, so here the phase is not uh, deterministic nature it is random nature randomly it is taking value uh, from interval minus pi to pi okay so that's where this situation is coming simply you can say that uh, chi is a, a random variable with uniform distribution what would be distribution it is a uh, distribution probability density function would be equal to uh, 1 by 2 pi when chi is taking value from minus 1 to uh, minus pi to pi and outside minus pi to pi uh, the density function is zero simply i would like to say that okay so you know the density function of uh, chi that just we have to find density function of y naught for fixed time t naught okay that is the so again if you try to see here the density function of y naught it would be no more uh, uniform in previous example we had already seen that for fixed time t naught uh, the x naught had a uniform density because the amplitude was uh, un uniformly varying but here if you try to see the phase is varying the phase is varying but uh, if you see the relation between random process in the phase uh, the relation is nonlinear in nature it is not linear so that's why uh, here no more y naught would be uh, uniform okay despite of being phase happens to be uh, what uh, a uniform random variable over this interval so here we have to find from the uh, what is the density of y naught so simply we have to apply derived density simply we know the density of uh, sky then by applying the principle of derived density we can easily find it very simple that derived density we had already seen that we treat this uh, y naught as a function of chi as a function of chi and just we have to apply the jacobian principle in order to find that just we have to remember that uh, what is what are the inverse in, for each uh, uh, each chi what are the Im inverse images of y so here uh, simply due to cosine function it will have more than one inverse images inverse simply this function is not easily invertible uh, over the do uh, given domain so you have to uh, smartly deal with sometimes it repeats because periodic nature of the cosine function okay so that also we have to uh, take in uh, take in account okay so here uh, we are fixing time t naught so with respect to that suppose we are denoting that random variable by y simply so what is happening that this is the transformation through which uh, this uh, this one is talking about capital chi notation because uh, here chi is a random variable so that's where capital notation is meant for denoting a random variable that's where this notation is we are taking okay so suppose you are, you are observing a, a specific y uh, for this uh, y naught so with respect to that this is the inverse image of y this is the this chi is the inverse image of y so this inverse image over the given interval minus pi to pi uh, including under this function uh, it would be definitely not easily invertible due to that uh, uh, what we call it so we have to see that uh, it would have two roots something like that uh, easily you can uh, plot that uh, situation uh, plot the graph uh, it, it is like uh, uh, you can raise it to minus infinity there is no space so here uh, just we have to find the inverse image simply i would like to say that inverse image process you can call it it is g inverse of y better uh, notation you can call it g inverse of y better uh, notation okay g inverse of y just call it this function is g of y g of x g of chi and here this would be g call it this one y equal to g of chi okay it will give chi equal to g inverse image of y simply call it inverse image so through that easily we can find the derived density function of y how so multiplying the uh, density, original density function of uh, chi 
and uh, you have to multiply this with Jacobian of transformation. This is the Jacobian of transformation. So in place of chi, you can write it G inverse Y, express this concept you can come up with. So here due to two different in, uh, inverse images of uh, uh, this uh, Y, uh, you, and both of you will be same, that's where two is coming. And one here just, uh, we know what is the density of uh, uh, this chi? It is uniform, having uniform, law so due to that density would be 1 by 2 pi for this interval minus pi to pi but uh, this one is coming with respect to jacobian factor easily you can get it from uh, here uh, differentiate this quantity with respect to y then you will get this quantity it is very much simple that you know from plus 2 okay and just simplify it at after simplification and you know that uh, uh, when this quantity a uh, square root quantity would be a real number when this y is less than equal to less than 1 a modulus of this one is less than one when y is observing value between minus one to one then this quantity would be real so that's where this one is your derived distribution of y derived distribution of y that you can uh, compute it through jacobian approach so and if you plot it is coming like this way this is the plot of the uh, derived y naught pdf of y naught so we got the explicit form of pdf of y naught okay so other thing that uh, mean actually it is already beyond 45 so minute so uh, in next class we will discuss about uh, uh, mean autocorrelation autocovariance uh, function all these are function time function all these are time function so we will talk about mean function mu of uh, t so what would be that so just we find uh, expectation of random variable random process xt then we find variance of xt so here what will happens so here randomness it will go by integrating it because we are finding expectation so it would be just a time function so this we will call it central representation central representation of the random process it would be just function time function it would be so by finding the expectation of random process we will get mean function by finding the variance of random process we will get variance function and after that we will define autocorrelation and autocovariance so autocorrelation has been uh, auto word is coming uh, that we are dealing with the same random process okay and if you are dealing two different random process then it would be cross correlation and likewise auto covariance is we are dealing with same random process so we have to find covariance from with respect to same random process at different uh, time instant different time instant that we have to find so those things we will discuss in next class okay regarding attendance just 